Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. We have been witnessing a lot of major discussions around policy for digital assets, specifically regulations and standardization um, that is going to help guardrail this entire industry. Now, the big thing that we have always talked about when it comes to regulations is that there's no transparent rules, right? But now we are starting to see the pressure being put on in the US and they are going to need to act as soon as possible. The reason why I say that is because the time bomb is ticking. It is the regulatory and innovation first time bomb. What do I mean by that? Well, major nations around the world, we have the UK, Singapore, Hong Kong, the UAE, India, all of these big areas are moving so damn fast on regulations for digital assets and crypto as a whole. And at this point in time, the US is falling greatly behind. So they need to come to a conclusion and start actually regulating the space in the US and adopting it because if they don't soon do that, guess what? The US will cease to be a major player in this major revolution that's happening through digitalization, DLT, and blockchain. Now, here you actually have Jeremy Allaire having a major conversation about digital asset policy and regulations. Check it out. It's kind of embarrassing that the United States is not able to, oh God, to do something here uh, when it purports to, be, to, to try and drive you know, things forward here. And um, you know, we've been you know, actively, obviously, talking about stablecoin legislation, right. um, <clears throat> you know, given, given USDC. But, um, you know, the, the fact that all of these other governments in the world are setting the laws for how dollars work on the internet yep. is kind of insane. And that's what's happening. That's I mean, I think that's what's exactly happening. what's happening. Well, and, and, you know, we're, we're facing the ground truth of that negotiating with governments around the world. Yeah, but it would be imagine. really helpful <laughs> if you know, the, the agencies and the, and, the, and the apparatus that's responsible for the way the dollar works in the world could, yeah. could, could get on and board. And, you know, I want to I say that in a different way because I think it is – people kind of see it and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. But really think about this, right? So you had Switzerland and Japan first to the table. Now, Japan, admittedly, that was after Mt. Gox, which was this big sort of yeah. tragic moment of theft, you know, whatnot. So they felt the need to respond to that. Yes. But they put into place some sort of baselines. Switzerland, very early baselines. Right. To be fair, FinCEN in the United States, to the point you made earlier, 2013, they were the first out the, gate. Were the, first out the gate, right? Yeah. So we were we were right there with the early yeah. doctors as well. I literally right there, I right? founded Circle because of the FinCEN. The FinCEN I was like, yeah. I can actually do this. Like, yeah. there wasn't clear. Yeah. I was thinking about it. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, there's a way to it do this legally. It gave you room to maneuver, right? right? right. And then, yeah. you know, so in the meantime, you've had the EU, 27 member states. I mean, we cannot overstate how complicated it is. 600 pages get, of legislative right? text. Yeah. That's the thing. They didn't even do a little thing. They did a massive thing. Yeah. Look, look, views on that. It's very complicated. Not yeah. all of it is. It's far from perfect. Nevertheless, the amount of coordination it takes to coordinate the EP, the EC, like all the member states, to get that across the line. And here we are right. in the United States. It's like, what's going on, folks? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It is, to your point, it really is it's not only embarrassing. It is I think it's shocking, actually. I find it quite shocking mm -hmm. that there's this kind of almost abdication of responsibility to the global financial community in a mm -hmm. way. And maybe that sounds arrogant as an American to say, but I do think there's responsibility yeah. being the purveyors of the dollar, which does remain the single strongest connecting force yes. in the global economy, to not have put forth some baseline guidance and promulgated some rules yeah. about what that ought to look like in a stable coin. It's just, it's wild, yeah. right? Well, the and, you know, it is completely wild at this point in time that we do have a lot of these nations. If you actually think about it, Jeremy Allaire really had um, everything on par there. He's talking about how these other nations outside of the U.S. Think about how crazy this is. They are regulating a U.S. dollar backed stablecoin. Think about how crazy that actually is. But beyond this, right, like. Go back to 2023, right? Last year, 
Look at how crazy this map is. In 2023, we saw an extraordinary boom in regulation across the globe. We dive into the state of regulation across 21 jurisdictions in our global crypto policy review and outlook. Look at the map. So as we look at what's going on, right, we are now starting to see major moves on the front around regulations with crypto. Again, the US, I would argue that it's, put on a put on a blindfold and throw um a dart at any company and that's the target that you are going after that's what's happening right now around the sec like i would not i would not be surprised if there was hidden behind the scenes footage of gary gensler going after you know crypto projects and companies and it was just him blindfolded throwing a dart at a you know board Again, this is how comical it has been in the U.S. for a lot of major companies. And we're talking about U.S.-based companies that are trying to push innovation, innovation forward. So it's crazy to me that they are getting accepted outside of the U.S. Um, and they are getting a lot more done outside of the U.S. as well. Also, the IMF, going back to January 12th, put out this report, Regulating Crypto, the Right Roles Could Provide a Safe Space for Innovation. Global crypto regulation would bring order to markets and provide a safe space for useful innovation to continue. Whether or not the U.S. wants to accept it, we are going to see major regulation coming to the space over the course of the next two years, I would argue. And again, a lot of people are saying, oh, we have to wait two years. No. Listen, we're talking about just regulations. We're not talking about price action. We're not talking about XRP pump, and we're not talking about anything like that. But once regulations are here, the fun is over. Right? It's no more, hey, go buy this meme coin and watch it do a 10, 20, 40, 50x. No, the focus is going to be put on legitimate projects that are focused on utility, that are focused on building and growing and becoming a significant piece of the puzzle on the global scale. The IMF, which is an elite organi organization, is telling you that regulations are coming. Now, beyond this, we have a lot more to talk about. But before we continue, I just want to let you guys in on the NordVPN deal for the channel. For all of you watching out there, NordVPN is offering up to 63% off. No, I'm not sponsored. None, you know, I'm not partnered or anything like that with NordVPN. I just think that right now, everyone should be protecting themselves. And NordVPN allows for another layer of security. And the best part about this is that they do offer crypto as a payment. They have three plans, the ultimate, the plus, and the standard. The ultimate is the best deal because it is $170 for the first two years, which is an absolute steal. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you get up to $1 million in coverage for identity theft, $100,000 in coverage for cyber extortion protection as well and there's a lot more benefits here as well again the standard is fair it's a vpn it has malware protection and it has trackers and ad blockers built into it if you guys do want to go check out this deal there's going to be a link down in the description below as well as in the comments below and with that being said let's dive on in so here we actually have jay clayton giving his advice to the crypto community how comical is this his advice should have been never underestimate the corruption at the sec and here we actually have former SEC chair uh, Jay Clayton gives his, his advice to the crypto community. Remember, this is the individual that dropped the XRP lawsuit on us. So let's check this out. Big shout out to Subjective Views for this. Listen closely. So if you had, let's say, a, a message of feedback or a general advice to the crypto community, do you think over the years the crypto community took the right approach in dealing with regulators? Were we too cocky? Were we too arrogant or we was a bit naivety when we ca it came to regulatory matters? And like, what advice would you give to the crypto community in the way they're dealing with uh, regulators? I, I think there were two mistakes by the crypto community. The first was to think that the principles of financial regulation and spheres regulation were going to change as a result of technology. I don't think that was ever going to happen. We, we, we have too much vested interest in the protection of our retail investors. And, and rightfully so, the, I, the ICO boom shows why you need it. Four, four billion dollars up in smoke, okay? The second thing was once that was realized that the law was not gonna bend substantially, to go for comprehensive legal change rather than incremental change was another mistake. My advice has been, 
start with something simple that's proven like stable coin. Figure out how to get a well-functioning stable coin. Figure out how to custody digital assets, whether it's a, a digital commodity, a digital security or something else. Let's figure out how to custody it. Then, then let's figure out how to, if we take those incremental steps, we're gonna get somewhere. Going, the idea, the myth that there was gonna be great legislative change that was gonna revamp the securities markets and the commodities markets, create a new regulator, that was crazy. So it's interesting because obviously, uh, and I know you wrote op-eds op -ed, op about this topic, about your views on stable coins, and I agree with this. There's a lot, obviously a lot of benefits that the stable coins can provide. And I, and I hear you where you mentioned that um, stable coins, maybe it's, our, it's an easy, it's a layup that actually community could use because of the benefits uh, are there. Uh, you know, but the, um, the, the crypto community, to its defense, I mean, there's been numerous efforts to try to provide, obviously, the stable coin rails, and there's numerous attempts to, and obviously, I'm not talking about algorithmic stable coins and some of the scams out there, but on a properly regulated uh, uh, manner, uh, do, you, do you still hold the same view that, obviously, stable coins have a lot of potential, and what do you think should could be done to bring stable coins more mainstream, if that's a goal that you believe, from a policy perspective, we should have? I think stable coins have immense potential. I think we should facilitate truly stable stable coins in our ecosystem. The amazing amount of stable coin transactions that have taken place without a single complaint that I know of um, instantaneously across the globe. Are you kidding me? Remarkable. And we should facilitate that. Why has it taken so long? Because people have asked for much more than just that as a start. And you're you're talking to you're talking to regulators and you're talking to legislators that have limited bandwidth. And if you're coming at them with 10 asks and eight are unreasonable, they're not going to filter out the two that are reasonable. And they're just going to look at this crypto community in a monolithic way and say, you know, that's just too hard. That's that's the reality of the you know bandwidth in the legislative process and bandwidth in the regulatory process is limited. So again, this is an individual that is trying to tell us his thoughts and giving his advice on crypto when he caused $15 billion worth of damage upon the announcement of the Ripple lawsuit. And it went on for two and a half years while XRP holders and retail investors missed out on one of the biggest bull runs. And now that we are gearing up for this next bull run, there is still a lot of speculation, scrutinization, and negative sentiment around XRP and Ripple because of the ongoing institutional sales. So this is a clown in disguise, if you will. And it's just so comical that these people are still commenting on anything regarding regulations. Now, beyond this, right... I also want to let you guys in on the overall secret that, guess what? Everyone that is betting on, you know, XRP having an ETF or any of that nonsense, guess what? That's not going to happen, in the short term at least. Everyone is still so focused on these ETFs. And it's so interesting at this point that, you know, it, it's like one of the biggest talking subjects all over X. For example, we got this report by Eleanor Tourette. Reporting on the timeline for a potential ETH ETF approval has turned up a plethora of different takes from ETF issuers, investment management firms, and sources close to the SEC Gov. One Bitcoin spot ETF issuer with an ETH spot ETF application says they're confident the approval and smooth launch of the Bitcoin spots will compel the SEC Gov to approve ETH spots ETFs. I don't think that this is the case. Another source tells me the line at the SEC at this very moment is a hard no, and there's currently some internal resistance to the idea. Still another says the listing of ETH futures ETFs and BlackRock's track record for getting ETFs approved leads them to believe that the ETH spot ETFs could launch by the end of summer. 
When I asked whether Gensler's OPAC position on the status of Ethereum as a potential security would come into play, they said the fact that the CFTC believes ETH is a commodity coupled with Ripple's partial court victory with XRP not being a security during secondary market transactions will make it an uphill battle for Gensler to take the position that most digital assets are securities going forward. Now, I could care less about an XRP ETF because again, it's not a major price driver. It will create a lot of volume, which is great, and it does increase liquidity, which is another great thing. But they're not major price drivers. Everyone thinks about these ETFs as a massive price driver. Guess what? Look at Bitcoin. When's, when's Bitcoin going to have its massive run up? And again, I don't want to see Bitcoin hit $80,000 to $100,000 and everyone say it's because of the ETF. No, it's because Bitcoin has its typical liquidity cycle run every single four years. But beyond that, right, XRP ETFs. Who really wants an XRP ETF? I question this because everyone wants to give up so much control to these players like BlackRock, for an example, for a little bit of price movement. Why are we sacrificing control to these tradi traditional giants and Wall Street giants for a little bit of price action? It makes no sense. But also remember that Ripple's major win, because again, I'm so tired of hearing about this partial court victory. It was a massive win with XRP. It is a major blocker for Gensler and the SEC. It actually stops them in their tracks heavily on a lot of these major uh, battles, including, of course, Ethereum being a security. Hester Pierce told Coinage Media this morning that the agency doesn't want to repeat the same mistake of delays with ETH ETFs. We need to be applying regulator, or sorry, regular way consideration uh, to these products. The same kind of consideration we apply to similar products. My takeaway, once again, the ball is very much in the SEC Gov's court. Uh, we'll get some clues in the next few months that the SEC staff are engaging in depth on the S1 filings like they did with the Bitcoin spots. In my opinion, I believe that we get an Ethereum ETF probably within the next six months, I would argue. Um, but beyond that, you know, are we really looking at this as a massive move in the market? Not really. But the big secret here is the fact that Ripple's win is going to continue to haunt Gensler and the SEC for years and years and years. And guess what? Outside of Gensler even being the chairman, Beyond him, the SEC will still have a lot to get through because of that massive win that Ripple did score. So with all of that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.